Right, um, I think uh, we'll get started there. Um, so uh, just to introduce myself, before I hand over to James, who's going to do the bulk of the presentation today. Um, my name is David Reynolds, I'm from Phoenix. I'm one of the infrastructure and virtualization specialists that uh, supports the sales teams within Phoenix. And uh, over the last 10 years, uh, Phoenix has been leading the way with virtual desktop solutions, whether that be VDI, session-based desktops, or if you want to integrate software as a service offerings within and use compute environments. Uh, our goal has always been to deliver a constant user experience across devices, organization, locations, without complexity. And our solutions typically delivered by VMware, but we also work with Citrix quite closely, we can deliver it across uh, different endpoints. Uh, but we have uh, Dell here, uh, Dell Wise here, sorry, uh, to explain the benefits of why you should build your end user experience around Dell Wise terminals. So, um, yeah, over to uh, James Watts now. I'll just uh, transfer um, the uh, presentation over to James. Okay, thank you, David. <clears throat> that should be coming over to you now, James. Okay, hello and welcome everyone. So my name is James Watts. I work in the Dellwise Cloud Client Computing team. Um, and today we're going to go through some of our thin client offerings and we're going to also have a look at some of our software solutions. And then finally, we're going to have a look through our VDI complete solutions. So without further ado, I will uh, run through the slides. If you have any questions, obviously put them in the chat window and uh, David and myself will answer them as and when. So let's just move forward. Right, so first of all, we're gonna have a look at our WISE 5070, which is one of our new platforms that have just come out. So WISE 5070 is one of our latest platforms, thin client platforms. What we're trying to do with the 5070 chassis before Dell and Wise had a whole range of different thin client devices, many, many different devices in our portfolio. And what we're trying to do is simplify the portfolio so customers have one option to buy and then they can configure the device as and when they need. So basically we're sort of simplifying and standardizing across the whole enterprise range into a single platform, which gives you the ability to scale on performance, and configurability, i.e. ports and things like that, and also ease of deployment as well. Now, with the 5070 latest generation, we use the latest generation in Intel um, gra uh, CPUs, graphics, and the latest performance RAM as well. So it gives you a, a real you know, decent performance in a single chassis. Another key point of our 5070 platform as well, thin client platform, is it gives you the ability to run true 4K graphics. So you can run a 3840 by 26, uh, 2160 resolution at a full 60 hertz now, both for 4K video and 4K still pictures as well. So the sort of graphic side around this platform has been quite um, improved um, compared to its predecessors. So versatility for the masses, I mentioned that earlier. So we're standardizing on a single platform. Um, we've also got extended chassis that you can buy as well, which give you various different options around your sort of configuration on that. Um, we also have, um, you know, multiple 4K offerings. So these devices will be able to power multiple 4K screens, which I'll run through a bit later on in some more detail. Um, as well as supporting all the um, latest sort of back-end brokers, whether it be Citrix sort of back-end that you're running, or a Microsoft or a VMware back-end, our thin client devices will support all the different types of back-end systems, whether you choose our Windows Embedded, Windows 10 IoT Enterprise, whether you choose our thin Linux offering, or whether you choose our thin OS operating system. And we run through some of the operating systems and what we offer um, in some of the slides a bit further on. So as I mentioned earlier, we're using the latest generation Gemini Lake processors in our, in our 5070 platform. So the very latest sort of cutting edge processors in these. This has moved away from our sort of historical CPUs where we used to use AMD quite a lot. 
we're now moving towards Intel across our platform, so especially on the 5070. So um, obviously that gives you a, a quite a good increase in performance, but the pricing remains, you know, comparable basically with the predecessors. So you haven't got any major sort of price hikes on that. Um, you know, we've got some of the latest features in there, like obviously DisplayPort. USB 3.1 Type-C is also now included on the device. We've got various different network options as well. We can also offer things like, you know, smart card readers, CAC readers. So a whole range of different options, you know, around the sort of performance and price. As I mentioned earlier on, we do support 4K graphics in there, so 3840 by 2160, so that's full 4K running at 60 hertz, whereas our predecessor machine, our 5060, would only run at 30 hertz. This now runs at a full 60 hertz, so giving you the full 4K experience on the devices. Um, just around graphics as well, you can also, as well as having these sort of standard Intel graphics in the thin client devices, you can now also get them with the optional AMD Radeon graphics card in there as well, which gives you the ability to run up to six displays and you can run four at 4K and then two at 2K. So it gives you a, a very good um, connectivity around your sort of monitor platforms, etc. So, why WISE 5070? As I mentioned before, it's a single flexible design. We've standardized um, on one platform, which makes it a lot easier for customers to understand and consume. Um, we've got much better performance than its predecessor, the 5060. Um, we offer these in Intel, Pentium or Celeron processors, so we give you the options around the processors. Um, we also offer 4K true graphics on there. As I said before, there's lots of expandability around the chassis as well. So if you need to get an extended chassis and have more ports, then obviously that's available as well. Um, we also have our discrete graphics card option, as I mentioned earlier, the AMD card. So AMD PCI card, so it's a mini PCI card that actually goes into the device, giving you those extra display ports on the actual device. But we'll run through some of the feeds and seeds around the sort of ports and what they can do a bit later on. So, and as I said, fully qualified um, leading desktop virtualization solution. So it's qualified for all the major backend brokers. It's predefined, pre-tested and ready to go out of the box. And we also use the um, latest um, uh, WISE management suite, which is now version 1.2. And I'll be running through some of the sort of information and features around our WISE management suite a bit later on. So let's go and have a look at the first version of the 5070. As, as you heard me say earlier, we offer two different platforms. We do a slim chassis with a Celeron or Pentium processor, and then we do an extended one with a Pentium processor. So this is the entry level Celeron device. So as you can see, it's a fully featured sort of connectivity on the front of the device, it's all the standard ports that you would come to expect from a, a Dell Wise product. Um, but some of the key features just to point out on the front of the Celeron device is the USB 3.1. So it's a type C powered USB uh, slot. So, you know, if you need to connect in devices for charging, things like that, USB 3 type C devices, you can connect them directly into the device. It also has things like sleep and charge, so it can actually charge your devices while the actual client device is in sleep mode. Another key feature that we have on the front of the 5070 is the CAC smart card reader. Now that's available as an optional um, part, but uh, obviously great if you've got sort of smart cards, RFID, that type of thing as well. So the Celeron units come in two different flavors. So you can either have a dual 2K or you can have a 4K configuration. So on the device, normally what we say is if it's, um, if it's got four gig of RAM in it, it'll be the standard 2K device. And if you notice on the back of the device, it has two display ports and that would indicate that it's just the 2K option with the four gig of RAM. If you go up to the larger configuration, then you get three display ports on there. So as I say, you've got a dual 2K and a 4K configuration option on this particular device. 
Um, it comes with uh, ThinOS, um, which is a WISE proprietary operating system, a bit like a zero client, and we have um, various connectivity into all the major backend brokers. So ThinOS is a very secure, very um, you know, easy to manage platform, very easy to deploy. We also offer it with our latest version of Thin Linux 2.0, which is now currently shipping on the 5070 device. And we also offer it with Windows 10 IoT enterprise configurations. So all of the um, Celeron 5070 devices, obviously very low power consumption. So it runs very quiet and very cool. So there's no moving parts in there, which in turn creates a very small carbon footprint for the device. Um, just one other point to mention on the back as well of the actual device, you have a optional port on there. Now at the moment that's just shown VGA, but you can actually configure that with anything you'd like. So if you wanted an extra fiber port, or if you wanted a secondary RJ45 port for sort of load balancing, anything like that, that is available as well on the 5070 platform. Now we move on to the Pentium version. So you can see the difference straight away on the back of the device between the Celeron and the Pentium. So Celeron one obviously had two display ports, but the Pentium one now has three display ports in there. So you could run two 4K monitors and three, a, a total of three. So you could run an extra monitor at 2K. So that gives you your three display port outputs. Um, again, standard ports as we saw again on the Celeron, so very similar ports on there, front and back. Um, you can obviously get um, wireless built into the device as well. That comes either um, with a Intel dual sort of wireless card, dual band wireless card that includes Bluetooth as well, Bluetooth 4.0 on there. Um, another thing to mention as well for sort of, you know, some legacy type customers, maybe customers that are using control systems, things like that. We also include the serial port on the back. So, you know, if you've got management and control systems, say in a factory or something like that, then obviously we still include the serial port on the device itself. Um, again, this device comes in all the different flavors from thin OS, thin Linux to Windows 10 IoT. And again, no moving parts in this device. So it's the fanless design, very quiet, very cool device. Now we move on to our WISE 5070 extended platform. So as you can see, this device is a lot larger than the uh, slimline sort of uh, devices that we looked at earlier. So this is our extended chassis, and this gives you the full range of different ports that you could possibly have on the device. So obviously on the front, it looks very similar. We've seen those ports before. On, on some of the previous slides, but on the back, it's got a lot more feature rich connectivity on there. So it will support up to six displays, four of them at 4K. So you can obviously run those, um, you know, 4K screens, four of them running on there, and two at 2K resolution. Um, again, it comes in all the different flavors of operating system, as we mentioned before. And they're also all designed and validated, as we said, for VMware, Citrix, and Microsoft BDI environments. Now, one of the key things with this actual device is obviously you've got a lot more connectivity. You can choose to have a secondary serial port on the back of it. If you've got customers that still need parallel ports on there, they can be facilitated on the back of the device as well. Um, you've also got the optional port again, as I said, you could add that VGA option port, you could actually add a fiber or any type of um, any type of sort of USB extra ports or fiber ports, or if you wanted an extra VGA, you could add that into the back of it. Now we spoke as well about the AMD Radeon card. Now that is only available on the extended chassis. So as you can see here, we have a PCIe expansion port. So what we do is we actually include at factory level one of the AMD cards. So if you require that, if you require a six screen setup, then what we can do is obviously include the AMD card as part of the build at the factory. So obviously if you do have any issues with the device, you're not dealing with sort of, you know, AMD on one side or Dell on the other. It's all classed as a single unit, single point of support for these devices. 
So that's the WISE 5070 extended chassis. Just to show you as well, this is the card that would go in there. So obviously we've only got a number of, a couple of different cards that are supported in there. I mentioned earlier the AMD Radeon card that can go into the device, the graphics card, but you can also have a dual serial card or a dual NIC card. And these are all fully supported and fully integrated into the operating system, whether it be ThinOS Linux or Windows 10 IoT. Um, just some of the key features, benefits, I mean, we've already sort of been through quite a lot of this before, but just to recap again, you've got a great choice of CPUs, you can optimise for price against performance, and there's a great range of different things that you can actually choose CPU-wise on these devices. As we mentioned, true 4K display, so, you know, if you're, if you're a sort of high-end sort of CAD worker, or you need multiple screens, then obviously this is you know, a good device to look at. Um, broad OS support with enhanced security. So obviously the 5070 is certified across all, across multiple user and usage environments. So whether it be VMware, whether it be Citrix, whether it be you know, Microsoft RDS, RDSH, it's supported across the board and it's certified as well to work with those those particular brokers. Um, ultimate connectivity, I won't go on too much about that. Obviously, we've been through you know, what ports are available and how you can configure. As you can see, there's a very feature-rich amount of ports on the actual device itself. Um, most complete VDI support, so you know, central point of contact for all of your sort of support needs, either bar our pro support or standard support lines. And also easy to manage as well. So obviously, if you're using sort of Windows 10 IoT devices, if you've chosen that flavor, you can manage that bar SCCM. Um, if you're already using SCCM, then obviously that's great. You know how to use it. These devices, the Windows 10 IoT ones, can be managed by our SCCM. The other management uh, tool that we also have, which is our own proprietary management tool, is Wise Management Suite. So that's Wise Management Suite, um, which I'll run through in a lot more detail in the, in the slides ahead. Um, just to give you a recap of the specifications, as I said earlier, we're using Windows 10 IoT on there, so that's Redstone one, so that's gonna be guaranteed to be you know, supported and available uh, well into the future. Um, Thin Linux, we're shipping 2.0.1, which is our latest version of Thin Linux. And on Thin OS as well, we're also shipping 8.5.1. Now, if you sort of um, remember back to, if you have used Thin OS before, historically you used to have to buy the actual thin OS maintenance as a software maintenance pack, as well as the actual client device. We're now bundling all of that into the actual device itself. So it comes in, you know, at the same price, basically. The device is sold and you don't have to buy software maintenance. It is all free now with thin OS. Obviously, Windows 10 and thin Linux has always been free updates. So they're fully available via our, our support page on the Dell website. Um, Processor-wise, so we said we got Pentium and Celeron. Just to give you an idea, this, the Pentium one, that will run a 1.5 gig. It's a quad-core processor, but it will burst up to 2.8 gig. So that gives you a lot of sort of extra resource available on tap on that particular platform. For the Celeron device, that's a 1.5 gig quad-core again, and that will burst up to 2.5 gig. So, Obviously, that gives you the ability to have that extra performance on tap when required. Um, Built-in graphics that we use on here um, is the um, Intel UHD 600-605 graphics controller. So, obviously, you know, standard sort of Intel graphics controller, decent graphics performance from the standard. But if you wish to expand that out, you can have a look at the AMD Radeon one to go into the extended chassis as an option. <clears throat> Another point to mention as well, um, Celeron units with 8 gig, you get 32 gig, you can configure that up to 256 gig SSD. So that's on the Celerons with 8 gig of RAM and the Pentium and Windows 10 IoT devices. 
Um, on the Celeron ones with four gig, um, we actually just put a 32 e MMC flash, which is soldered onto the board. So um, obviously you can't upgrade that. So that is the standard one on the entry level Celeron. But if you move over to the higher end 5070s, you can obviously decide whether you want 32 up to 256. There is also another option in there as well. You can also add an optional SSD in there. So technically you could actually have a dual boot machine. So if you wanted to put your own image on there, you could boot from one image, say a Windows 10 IoT one, and then you could also boot to a thin OS image as well. So it just gives you different options around there. Obviously there are all the ports and uh, sort of IOs that are available on the device. Um, just to give you an idea as well about the sort of wireless card uh, networking, we've either got the Realtek um, LAN, which is a gigabit ethernet, and then we have the Intel um, dual band AC, basically Wi-Fi card with Bluetooth version four. All the um, antennas are external. Uh, also, just to give you another idea as well around the power consumption, the standard entry level sort of slim design chassis use a 65 watt power supply. The extended ones will use a 130 watt power supply. Um, if you did have a slimline chassis but had some very sort of power hungry USB devices plugged in, um, what you can do is you can actually upgrade the 65 watt to an optional 90 watt to give you know, extra power support basically for the USB port. So if you've got loads of very power hungry devices, then obviously it might be an option to look at the 90 watt power supply. Um, just to give you a bit of an idea as well, obviously around the sort of um, the energy star ratings and things like that, if you want any of the environmental ergonomic or regulatory standard information that's all available on our website so all the energy style ep etc is all available on our website right so um just to uh give you an idea of the windows 10 platform obviously 5070 with windows 10 we offer that in many different languages across EMEA. so all the major languages are fully supported on there um, we've also got a product called Wise Easy Setup. Now, Wise Easy Setup basically gives you the ability to configure and lock down your Windows 10 device. So, um, you know, basically this, this utility is totally free to download. So if you've already got a Windows embedded, Windows 7 embedded device or anything like that from Dell Wise, you can actually download Wise Easy Setup and install it onto those devices. Now, obviously it gives you the ability to totally lock down the user environments. You could have it into a kiosk type mode, just with one or two applications available for users. You can also specify user settings. So, you know, allowing your users to sort of change the Wi-Fi network, change the sound, um, display settings. You can obviously give them access to that and turn those features on and off. Um, this can also be done centrally as well. Um, via WISE Management Suite as well. So you can configure all these settings through WISE Management Suite and then deploy them out to the actual devices themselves. Uh, another key feature as well, now with Windows 10 IoT, um, the software SA includes VDA rights. So basically the software agreement now includes the VDA rights. So you don't have to buy extra VDA or um, you know, VDA licensing basically, so it comes with the actual device. Also, we've done a lot of work around the out of box experience as well. So we've upgraded our sort of quick start guides. We've got a lot more um, information on the actual device on first boot up. So it gives you the ability to either connect into your WMS server straight away or configure it by USB key. It gives you a whole range of different options around getting the device set up and started. Okay, other operating system. We also offer the 5070 with BIOS only. So basically we don't put any operating system on there. So if you do have customers that want a, a total sort of vanilla device, then we do offer it with uh, just BIOS only on there. So um, they'll be PXC compatible, boot compatible, and obviously they have been tested with Windows 10 as well. 
Um, the other operating system was WISE ThinOS, so latest version is 8.5.1. And ThinOS is virus and malware immune. I mean, it's, it's basically a very, very small footprint operating system, um, very secure, very easy to deploy. Um, and it's, you know, it has been virus and malware immune for many years now. ThinOS has been about for many years. And um, yeah, because we don't, we hide the APKs on there. No one's got access to that. It's basically totally locked down. So um, you've got very low to no management overheads on these devices. So as I said before, it's very easy to manage these devices straight out of the box. Very easy to deploy as well. So, you know, you can get them running very quickly, get them deployed out into your estate in very little time at all. Uh, we've also got, you know, instant on very quick boot times with thin client devices. And we've also got great uh, multimedia support on there as well. One of the drawbacks with ThinOS is limited peripheral support. So, you know, if you've got multiple peripherals, you know, you know, bespoke peripherals, things like that, that need specific drivers, then yeah, some of the um, thin OS devices, you know, probably wouldn't be the option. But if you've got your standard sort of headsets, things like that, keyboard, mouse, then obviously thin OS fully supports that at a local level. Another thing to mention as well, the reason thin OS is so secure is it doesn't have any local application support. So you don't have the ability to install any applications locally that also helps out with the security of the device. Um, why is Thin Linux 2? So obviously we've got Thin Linux 2 on the device. You're probably sort of fairly aware of uh, Linux and what it can do and the flexibility of it. Our Linux devices are based on Ubuntu code. So we've actually moved over um, from the predecessor and now moved everything over to Ubuntu. So all of our Thin Linux devices are now based on Ubuntu because really it's probably the most preferred flavor of Linux anyway. Um, you know, with Linux, thin Linux devices, you've got very good peripheral support on there. Um, you've got out of box support for several app different applications. Also, you can install third party applications and developments. You know, when people have developed third party applications, they can be installed on there as well. So now we're also just going to mention as well WISE Management Suite. I'll go through some of the functionality of that in a bit. But as we're talking about the 5070, I thought I'd just mention that the 5070 has been designed to run with the new version of WISE Management Suite 1.2. A lot of the features and sort of um, and functionality within WISE Management Suite 1.2 fully supports the 5070 being the latest platform. So those two devices, the software solution and the hardware client run hand in hand. Um, so obviously centralized management, and you can do that with Wise Management Suite, either on-premise or cloud versions. You have two different versions that you can run. Um, you can obviously customize all your WES devices or Windows 10 IoT with easy setup, which makes it very easy to manage. Um, we're also the only management console which is localized to support customers in all regions. So obviously all language regions we support with the management suite. You can monitor the state of device from anywhere, even from a mobile phone. So we also offer a WISE management suite app as well that you can run on a mobile device. But we'll run through some of the WISE management suite um, sort of functionality very shortly. Just to give you an idea, we also offer a whole load of different sort of options around the 5070. So if you want sort of, um, you know, behind the monitor mounts, if you want chassis stands, wall mounts, dual visa arm mounts, you know, that type of thing, we support all different mounting options for the thin client device. As you can see, you know, you can mount it onto the back of one of our P-series, U-series monitors, or one of the E-series monitors, and you can mount them up to a 43-inch monitor. So any sort of large monitor, we offer all the sort of connectivity and mount brackets that you would need, basically. Um, just to mention accessories a bit further, obviously we do a range of different sort of monitors to go with that. We've got various different audio sort of headset devices stands, keyboards, brackets and mounts, etc. So we've got a whole range of different sort of options to go with our 
new 5070 platform. Um, so why why refresh then? I mean, obviously Microsoft are ending support for Windows 7, you know, in in the near future. So it's inevitable people are going to be upgrading to Windows 10. So really, you know, it's an ideal time for customers like yourself to have a look at some of these um, Windows 10 IoT devices and decide it's time to make the leap or it's not time to make the leap. But some of the key sort of features, improved security with Windows 10, improved efficiency, improved productivity, and the user experience is a lot better with Windows 10 IoT. So just to recap again, so productivity, we say improved productivity, how does that work? So ensures compatibility with the latest brokers. So if you're upgrading the sort of backend systems, it ensures compatibility with all your backend systems. The boot to login time is 300% faster for Windows 10 um, compared to some of the historical sort of operating systems. We also provide native enablement for unified communication. So um, obviously that's run at a local level now and doesn't have to re be redirected back into the session. We also support high multiple you know, resolution screens. So which can improve your, your productivity. Enhanced security. So we provide multiple OS support. We manage uh, software updates centrally. So that can all be um, classed under the sort of security umbrella. We've improved endpoint security with integrated smart card readers on, on a, the devices as well. So as I mentioned, smart card and CAC readers. Um, we also offer full support for biometric and multi-factor authentication, so that adds an extra level of security to your to your environment. Um, and thin OS, as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, very secure operating system. Um, so it's you know, virtually eliminates cyber threats. Really, thin OS. Management-wise, we said you know it's simplified to manage, so very easy to manage. You can get a device installed and ready to go in, you know, in in about a minute, basically, from getting it powered on. Um, you can get that configured, connected into your environment very quickly, very easily. Gives you 100% control over the endpoints, including the management, um, and it also eliminates, you know, most downtime for, you know, if you have to. Um, set the device up or you've got a device that goes down, you can just send a new box out and it will immediately connect into the management suite, pull down all the connection settings and off you go. Um, we mentioned earlier graphics, so Windows 10's enhanced graphics, um, support all the latest protocols so you get the best user experience, 4K we mentioned as well and high resolution graphics for sort of specialized power users, CAD users, things like that. So very, very good around the sort of graphics platform. And that, the main thing is it reduced the cost. So, um, you know, endpoints consistent updates and five year life cycle. So we've got a nice long five year life cycle on these products. I mean, we've still got customers that are out there using thin client devices that are sort of 10 years. So. Obviously, these devices are very robust and we have great life cycle on them. Um, you can also save a um, significant amount of um, money in sort of power costs. So obviously, we mentioned the EP ratings, the amount of power the devices consume as they've got no moving parts. So you do get a good sort of reduction in costs around the power side of it. Um, and you know, basically you can reclaim thousands of hours to lost boot times, screens, things like that. So basically the bottom line is you'll have less support time with a thin client. It's easy to manage and easy to set up out of the box. Right, now we're going to just have a quick look at one of our other platforms as well. Obviously we spoke about the 5070. We also have the 3040, which is our entry level device. So Again, it's a quad core device using Intel um, CPUs in the actual design. Um, flexible and efficiency, so good sort of robust of design, great connectivity, and again, very secure and very easy to manage. So this is the 3040 device. As you can see, it's a much smaller footprint device. Um, it's our entry level device, giving good connectivity at an entry level price point, basically. 
So as you can see on the back of the device, you've got two display ports. They're run at uh, 2560 by 1600. So you get dual 2K support on those. Um, you've got your standards for the ports and sockets on there. These can also be configured with Wi-Fi as well if you require Wi-Fi on the client device. So here's an idea of the specification on it. So the 3040 uses the Intel X5 Atom processor. Um, so yeah, entry level processor, but quad core 1.44. Um, everything's soldered down on the device. So it's basically system on a chip on this device. You can't upgrade the memory and you can't upgrade the flash disk in there. It's all literally system on a chip. Um, as I said, again, obviously you can get that with wireless as well, so you can get dual band on there if you require that. And as I said earlier as well, display port 2560 by 1600. Another thing to point out on this device as well, very low power consumption, 3.3 watts in an idle state. So very, very low power consumption on this device. Right. To give you an idea where this currently sits, where these products sit, this is our current um, Thin Client roadmap. So as you can see, the 5070 is now out um, and the 3040 is now out. And they'll be continuing, as we said, they have a five-year life cycle on these devices. So they'll be going on for the foreseeable future. Um, some of the other devices, these are the ones that we're slowly sort of getting rid of and replacing now with the 5070. So the idea behind this was to simplify our whole roadmap and just literally have a couple of platforms to make it easier for customers to choose. So as you can see here, the 7000 series, we're looking to sort of end that by the time, you know, calendar year 19 Q1. 5040 all in one, similar sort of time. The older 5000 series, so if you've used the sort of 5060, 5020 or 5010, they're also going end of life. So the idea around this is to migrate all of these users over to the 5070 platform. Now, if you look lower down, you've got the 3020, 3030 and 3030 Windows embedded. What we're doing here is we're moving all those customers either towards the 3040 if they're price conscious and it's, you know, they're looking for an entry level low price device or going to one of the sort of entry level 5070s just to give them, give you different options around which platform to go for. So that just gives you an idea where the thin clients sit in our sort of roadmap and our portfolio. Um, again, all of our clients are backed up by Dell's um, deployment services. So if you wanted to, you could have Dell deployment services. You also can go for Dell Pro support on these devices. So obviously giving you 24 seven support, direct point of contact for any sort of issues or anything like that you might have with the devices. So we offer Pro support on that. We also offer Dell accidental damage as well. So any sort of liquid spills, anything like that, you can take out cover for that as well. So there's all the standard sort of Dell options that you can get around the actual client device itself. Right, so now we're going to have a look at Wise Management Suite. You heard me mention that earlier. So basically, while um, Wise Management Suite, you can manage unlimited amount of thin client devices. You've got zero touch deployment. We're the only thin client solution with a mobile app currently. We can also offer real time reporting and analytics on your estate of devices. So it gives you real time information on what's going on and what you know status any of your devices and users are in. You can get Wise Management Suite set up in five minutes or less, so very quick to deploy, set up and deploy. And in turn, this support tool will minimize the TCO. So let's have a little look about what we actually offer around the Wise Management Suite. So if you have a look on the left here, you've got Wise Management Suite Standard. Now, Wise Management Suite Standard is a free offering. This is you can download this totally for free and use it um, unlimited, basically. So there's no time um, sort of stamp or anything like that on there. You can use the standard version totally free, but it is a cut down version of the management suite. Also, the standard version can only be installed on your data center, so on a private cloud. 
So that's only available on private cloud if you're going to have an on-premise on solution, basically, to manage your estate of devices. The other option is to go for the Wise Management Suite Pro. Now, the Pro version, you can either have as an on-premise, as we said before, where you manage it in your own data center, or you can have a public cloud where it's actually hosted in one of our European data centers where we manage it, we update it, we maintain it basically for you. You just use the service. So they're the two different types. Obviously, the pro version is chargeable. The standard version is free. Uh, if we just go through, this just gives you an idea of some of the features around the standard version compared to the pro version. Now, obviously, standard version is free. You can support up to 10,000 thin client devices. And that gives you basic management and configuration features. So it gives you the ability to sort of write your policies and your configuration scripts and deploy them to the devices. Um, so it's a sort of basic package, but it gives you the ability to at least configure and deploy all your settings out to your, your client devices. Um, for the Management Suite Pro, um, you're looking at about $20 per seat per year. So it's done on a per seat per year basis. That will support up to 100,000 thin clients and converted PCs as well. So um, that will support up to 100,000. We also offer um, a WDM to WMS import tool. Now, WDM is our old management platform, so Wise Device Manager. So if you move over to the new management suite, you'll get the import tools. So you can import all of your settings straight over to the new management suite very easy and very quickly. Um, some of the other features, things like auto grouping, so you can create sort of, uh, parent groups, child groups, you can auto group those, deploy certain software packages to different groups um, and make it as a single sort of deployment package. So where the free version you have to do it individually with this you can group users together and deploy it to all of all the different groups at a different time we also support multi-tenancy you can do a lot of the bias configuration on the pro uh, version as well you get all of the active directory integration so if you're already obviously most people are using active directory you can integrate this into your active directory as well WMS also gives you enterprise grade reporting. So as I said, you can get reports, real time reports on your estate of devices, whether they're compliant, when they last checked in, what status they're at, et cetera, et cetera. So you get a lot of useful information from the reporting side on the pro version. We also offer a mobile app. So if you're sort of um, want to use it on your Android or iOS device, um, you can do. You can basically download it from Google Play or you can download it from the Apple Store, install it on your device and you have full manageability of your estate of devices from your mobile phone basically. Another thing to mention as well around support, if you buy the Pro um, version, you also get Pro support included. So that's included as part of the price. Um, just to give you an idea at a sort of glimpse, obviously, Wise Management Suite in a glimpse is scalable, which is one of the main things. So if you have, obviously, the on-premise one, you can do up to 100,000 users. If you have a cloud version, you can go up to a million users if you wanted to. Um, very secure, so communication between the endpoint device and the actual management console uses HTTPS. You can also have two-factor authentication on there. Um, great for configuration, so all your system and BIOS configuration can be done centrally from the management suite. Gives you a complete hardware inventory, so you know exactly what you've got in your estate at any one time. Great if you're having sort of audits or things like that, you can get all the information, all the compliancy about the device, you know, from a single pane of glass. Um, another thing you can do as well, obviously, you can schedule tasks, so you can set them to all wake up at a certain time, shut down, restart, etc. So supports real-time commands. Um, you can also manage all the apps and OS, so you can push um, centralized push apps out from the management suite. You can also update all your OS images as well from the management suite as well. So when a new version of the operating system or a patch comes out, 
you can load that into your management suite and push that out centrally to all of your devices. Another great feature is the troubleshooting side of it as well. So obviously we said you can use browser or mobile device, you get all the alerts come up, you get system health information. You can also have intrusion detection as well on the thin client devices as well. Another thing that's very useful is the ability to do remote shadowing as well. So if you want to use VNC, you can connect from your single pane of glass to the management console directly to the endpoint device to obviously see what's going on for support purposes and take over the device as required. Uh, just to give you an idea of the dashboard, this is what it looks like. So obviously you've got all your alerts in there, um, giving you information about you know sort of alerts and things that need to be highlighted. You've also got your events as well. So all the events that are going on in your sort of estate of devices will show up on there. Also, it gives you an idea of how many devices are checked in, what sort of operating systems they're running, whether they're quarantined, whether they're compliant or non-compliant. So a lot of useful information in this. Uh, just to give you an idea, this is what the mobile app looks like. So obviously it allows administrators to manage and monitor devices from anywhere, as I said, Android or iOS, iOS devices. Um, and it can be offered with the public or private cloud, but it has to be the pro version. It doesn't come with the standard version. So that was basically, and one thing to mention about the management suite as well, I mean, I can give this information out later, but if you want to have a look at the management suite pro and you just want to evaluate it, you can actually go onto the WISE management suite pro website and sign up for a free 45 day trial. And that gives you 45 day trial for both the on-premise and the cloud version, the off-premise. So, and if you need to extend that for extended testing, we can obviously extend that further for you as well. So the pro version is available as a trial as well. Um, another thing to mention as well is WISE Converter for PCs. So if you're a type of client who's sort of sort of moving over to thin clients, VDI environments, and you're sort of halfway through the migration, you've got a load of sort of physical PCs, you want to set up a VDI backend and maybe slowly introduce some of the thin client devices, but you still want to utilize some of your older sort of Windows PCs. What we can offer is a thing called Wise Converter for PCs that will basically convert your device into a fully fledged uh, Windows embedded thin client device. So it's actually Windows 10 IoT embedded device. So, um, and obviously that can be centrally managed, centrally controlled via our management suite. So if we just have a look at that. It's a Windows based solution. It'll repurpose any PC. It prefer, preserves the base OS on there when you put it on there. It's vendor agnostic, so you could use it on any vendors, um, any vendors sort of desktops or laptops. Uh, you can retain VDI licensing and it's very easy to roll back if required. Just to give you an idea, this is what it would look like. So you can basically repurpose any PC into a fully sort of locked down version of a, of a Windows 10 IoT client. So very easy to install, very easy to manage. And again, this can be all the settings can be done through the WISE management suite. Um, typical user case scenarios for these, so, you know, organisations with limited budget and are planning um, to transition to thin clients, so, or looking to increase the life of existing hardware. Um, organisations looking to test, uh, test and deploy desktop virtualization at minimal cost. So if you're just sort of dipping your foot into it, you just want to have a look and see, then this could be an option for you. Um, organizations transitioning to Windows 10 um, with unused old hardware, so that could be a, a, a reason why you'd move over to this. Um, organizations with mixed environments, PCs, thin clients, and you want to manage it from a single pane of glass, this could be an option for you as well. Um, the PC converter, again, is a chargeable bit of software, um, but you can also download it on a free trial as well, so you can test it out before you buy it. Um, just to give you an idea of what devices, what it's compatible with, 
Um, operating systems, basically it'll go back as far as Windows 7 32-bit professional or enterprise with service pack one. Um, if you've got anything sort of older than that, or if you've got anything with sort of these, you know, Windows 7 starter or, you know, basic editions, then you won't be able to convert it, unfortunately. So these are the supported compatible operating systems for conversion. Um, so just PC converter at a glance, just to recap again, vendor agnostic, security of a thin client, so it gives you the full security, connect to the VDI broker of your choice, so it'll connect into any of the brokers, easy to roll back, can be centralized, um, centrally managed with the management suite, includes pro support, you get all the maintenance and updates of that. Um, local and remote installation in under 20 minutes, and it gives the users the familiarity, familiarity of Windows 10, of Windows OS as well. So obviously, you know, users you, you are used to using Windows devices, and it still gives them that same sort of experience. Um, just to let you know, obviously, this is where you can download it from. So if you need to, you can go to this website. Um, select Wise Converter for PCs, and then you get your instructions via email on how to do your free trial. Um, now we're just going to move on to VDI Complete. Now, VDI Complete is a thing that we sort of developed a little while ago. And what it is, it's basically a complete bundle of all of our services together. So everything from the server end to the broker to all the sort of NVIDIA cards and graphics, if you require that for sort of CAD users, um, and the thin client devices themselves. And then what we do is we bundle this together and it gives you a much greater discount around the VMware Horizon licensing and the actual hardware that you're buying as well. So it gives you an overall cost saving which is much more than if you bought the components individually. And there's various different ways of consuming this. So. Um, VDI solutions, obviously it's powered by VMware Horizon, all our VDI complete solutions are Horizon basically, VMware Horizon. We also offer solutions around the Citrix platform, but for VDI complete it's all around the VMware Horizon platform. So it gives you end-to-end -end desktop and application virtualization. We use the best of breed at Dell Technologies, so we're using the latest 14G um, Power Edge servers, the R740 servers, um, fully optimized and validated for a VDI complete solution. So basically, we certify it's already predefined, pre tested, so it's easy to scale and very predictable out of the box. Also, another key thing is you've got one company to call for sales and support. So if you did encounter any issues, rather than you know, having to ring up, you know, certain companies from one part of the solution, another company for another part. You've got a single point of contact if you do have any problems. Um, basically, complete solution. So superior end-to-end -end VDI solutions. Um, solutions, we can do it for sort of, you know, a per user, per month basis as well. There's different sort of financing around that as well. Um, but we can offer that in various different flavors through our, our sort of um, our different quoting options that we can offer as well. And as I said, simplified support model, one company for all your support purposes. Um, the actual servers themselves, as I said before, they're based on the latest PowerEdge R740 servers, so a 14G server. And the VDI Complete solution is offered either as a VX Rail platform. So that's a nice, easy turnkey white glove solution. Very easy to scale. You can scale VxRail up to 64 nodes in one cluster. Um, you know, entry level and VDI optimization versions are available. So you can have the standard, you can have an entry level, one of our E series one, or you can go for the sort of full sort of workstation, GPU sort of um, V570 basically with all the latest NVIDIA P40 cards, things like that in there. Alternatively, if you want something that you want to sort of um, sort of manually sort of uh, adjust and and do yourself, obviously we offer it as a VSAM ready node. Easy to deploy again, rapid deployment. Um, we do entry level and we also do the sort of high end, higher resolutions. But if you like to sort of, you know, tweak the setup slightly, 
um, have more control over it and you know more control over the setup then obviously a vSAM ready node's easier um, for you if you wanted that type of solution if you just want something that's scalable and easy to actually um, sort of scale up and be very predictable then obviously VxRail is is also an option so as I said before end-to-end -end stack we offer so everything from the thin client itself to the broker software to the server end and all the networking so we can offer end-to-end -end stack um, single vendor model as we said before easier to procure if you're only calling one company a lot easier to get the prices bundled up into a single quote as well um, also you can uh, leverage existing skills as well easiest way to integrate with existing vSphere uh, tools and processes so if you've already got sort of vSphere experience um, obviously these are based and used on vSphere as well just to give you an idea of you know what we offer around these types of platforms we've got various different ones under the vSAM ready node we've got the essentials package that was actually based this slide's a little bit old now but it was based on the r630 640 platform so actually it's based on the 640 platform now um, but as you can see you get horizon advanced edition with that and we do it sort of based on 600 users and it'll average out at about eight eight dollars per user per month basically for this type of scenario if you require the expanded version and you require things like GPU and video graphics, say, you know, the M10 card for user density or the P40 card for performance, then you'd have a look at the expanded platform. Um, obviously, R730, R740 available on that. That comes with VMware Horizon Enterprise Edition. It's name user licensing. We can change that to concurrent as well. Obviously, this isn't set in stone. We can change the specs slightly on these. We've got obviously a lot of uh, room for changing specs and scaling up and scaling down on these. And that works out on um, you know $13 per user per month based on 800 users. So just to give you an idea really, um, on the VX rail side, we've obviously got the entry level. So we've got the E series that comes with the advanced edition that comes in at 12, $12 per user per month on 600 user basis. And then we have the expanded version, obviously, for your sort of larger deployments or higher end graphics that again comes with the enterprise version of VMware Horizon. And that comes in at $18 per user, and that's based on 800 users. So just gives you an easy sort of overview of what we offer around the VDI Complete solution. We do have a web page, obviously, with VDI Complete on there. So if you want to have a look on there, that gives you a whole load of different options, uh, TCO calculators, that type of thing on there. So there's loads of useful information. And obviously, if you do want more information around these platforms or a deeper dive or, you know, scaling, obviously, we can work in conjunction and help you with Phoenix and obviously get in touch with David to get my details, my email address. I can always chat to you and help you out with any sort of advice around the client side, software solutions, and also around the sort of uh, server side, whether it's VxRail or vSAN as well. Okay, and I think that is about it.